After I finished my undergraduate degree in political science and justice and peace studies, I knew that I wanted a career in human rights. I decided to attend law school and I chose Mitchell Hamlin because of World Without Genocide. I wanted to be at a law school where I could learn and also take action. World Without Genocide has a student chapter at Mitchell Hamlin. I signed up right away to get involved. A few months later, I was the president of the student chapter. I spent my first spring break of law school with World Without Genocide on its annual spring study trip in New York and Washington, D.C. It's a week of intensive meetings for law students with leaders of the world's most important human rights organizations like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the United Nations. A year later, I took Ellen's law class, Genocide Prevention, a 21st Century Challenge. I became a Benjamin B. Ferenz Fellow in Human Rights and Law at the beginning of my second year of law school. This fellowship, which I've held for the past two years, has been life-changing. I'm very concerned about the violence caused by conflict minerals that are connected to all of us, specifically through our cell phones and other small electronics. As a fellow, I've given many speeches and a radio interview about this crisis. This year, I worked with Minnesota Senator Sandy Pappas and Minnesota Representative Phyllis Kahn to get a state bill passed regarding conflict minerals. I've met with dozens of senators and representatives to get their support for the bill. I've delivered a few thousand letters to them from their constituents. I've testified at hearings in both the House and the Senate. I'm sure I'm the only law student at Mitchell Hamlin with these remarkable and unique experiences. Thank you for making it all possible. I hope that you will make it possible for next year's Forens Fellows as well. I worked on a research project about the violence in Darfur when I was an undergrad. I then spent two years teaching in Thailand and South Korea. These experiences gave me a commitment to human rights and justice. Part of the reason that I came to Mitchell was because I knew I wanted a Friends Fellowship, and this is my second year as a fellow. As a Jewish person, I understand what it's like to have a vital part of your identity targeted for hate. I have a master's degree in political science with a focus on international relations. This background, being a religious minority with a global perspective, led me to work with refugee clients at Immigrant Law Center of Minnesota. I'm now dedicated to working with people who are persecuted for their beliefs. Ken and I focused on this issue in our fellowships. We've been raising awareness about the Rohingya, a minority Muslim group in Burma. The UN calls them the most persecuted people on earth. We went to Burma last winter to learn more. We'll hold a workshop at the American Center in Burma this fall to teach Burmese law students, lawyers, and others about human rights. When we came back to Minnesota, we gave a talk about the Rohingya and contacted our elected officials to support important U.S. legislation. We also went to Thailand on this trip. We established an international electronic dialogue between Mitchell Law students and students in Thailand on topics of human rights. We'll expand this pilot program next year to students in Burma. The persecution of religious minorities in Syria and Iraq is also part of our fellowship portfolio. The U.S. has labeled the violence against the Yazidi to be genocide. We were the featured speakers at a public program about these issues. The Ferenc Fellowship has given me career direction, and I now know that I want to work and teach in international human rights. I've learned that genocides and mass atrocities go largely unacknowledged today. It's up to us to become tomorrow's human rights leaders. Thank you for helping us create a world without genocide. And a special thanks to Mr. Ferenz. We worked on the International Criminal Court, a Ferenz Fellowship priority. Mr. Ferenz is the sole surviving prosecutor from the Nuremberg war crimes trials after the Holocaust. He was instrumental in forming the court, and at age 92, he gave the closing statement at the court's first case just a few years ago. The court prosecutes perpetrators of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. And although 125 countries have ratified their support for the court, the United States has not yet done so. Our opportunity as fellows was to increase awareness of the court both locally and nationally. We had a unique experience. Every year, the court has a week-long administrative meeting for delegates from the participating countries and others invited attendees. We went to that meeting at the court's headquarters at The Hague in the Netherlands. We were special rapporteurs and reported back to a national organization about the plenary sessions and special meetings over the eight days. We saw the realities of how the court works. We were there and heard what's happening today and for the near future in the world's most important court. You can't get this experience anywhere else. 
We give continuing legal education programs about the court at Mitchell Hamlin School of Law and at St. Catherine University. We focused on women and the court, women as victims, perpetrators, prosecutors, and judges. For each of us, this experience was far beyond anything we ever imagined. Thank you.